Welcome back to the Crossboard Interview Podcast. We are two days away from election day here in the city of Calgary, and we are sitting down this morning with Ward 1 incumbent councillor, Ward Sutherland. Ward, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and a pleasure. You're welcome. It's great to talk about the city. Um, Ward, uh, you, were, you were in this position seven years ago, or I should say eight years ago in 2013. What advice right now are you giving to the candidates of Ward 1 who are vying to replace you on city council right now? Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest challenges, to be honest, is actually understanding what a councillor does and what the job is. Um, even when I went into it, because I've been in business all my life and, and uh, ran some divisions, uh, large divisions, I, I found out that the real core work of a counselor is quite different from what you see in the papers or TV. Uh, it looks quite glamorous and it looks like council is all the work. In fact, I would say council is about uh, less than 10% of your actual job. Uh, the city, most people don't realize that the city of Calgary is actually a legal corporation that operates under the Municipal Government Act. And so what does that mean? What it means is you have this large corporation that's budget is over $4 billion a year. That is a unit city. And what that means is this uh, city delivers over 61 different services to Calgarians. And they vary from your garbage pickup uh, to environmental issues, to uh, planning, to business licenses, et cetera. And you really have to uh, kind of be a, a semi-expert on so many different things. And it's very difficult to, to be that way. And it takes quite a long time to get up to speed. We are seeing one of the highest turnover rates in city council, including yourself. Uh, before we talk about the new council, I want to talk about your time on council and your decision not to run. Was it a hard decision? Because I know you had originally put your name forward, but after uh, a few months, you did withdraw to support your fellow councillor, Jeff Davison, in his mayoral run. But was it a hard decision at the end of the day? Um. It was, um, I, I think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of uh, the eight years of Ward 1. What I can say is, I, you know, I, I, I'm from the business world. I have a very pragmatic, logical uh, decision-making process. And what I can say is in, in eight years in Ward 1, there's been over uh, $4 billion worth of private investment uh, infrastructure. We've had the new uh, COP interchange, a new 80 Third Street remodel, uh, Bonas. Uh, there's been a total revitalization with the main streets, with the Bonas sidewalks, uh, busted curbs. Everything have all been replaced. Uh, we focused on crime in Bonas and closed down uh, significant drug houses. Now families are moving in. Um, it, it's a complete change and it's a gem. And then on the park side, well, we got a new revitalized Bonas Park. We have a brand new Dale Hodges Park, and we have a brand new Haskane Park, which we'll have access to uh, next year. And uh, some great developments like the Greenwich and Greenwich West that has, uh, I don't know if anybody's driven by, but you see that massive cool looking building. It's gonna be a permanent far farmer's market. So uh, throughout the award and the different communities, there's been significant investment. Of course, the uh, Shane Holmes Rec Center, and uh, two, two uh, bike, uh, uh, sorry, two skate parks in different areas. Um, so I think when you're talking about the city, these are things that affect people on a daily basis, their lives. And uh, it, it's exciting to have all these things done. So what I've really done, to be honest, in the last couple of years is, is focused on citywide issues, uh, such as um, I worked on the uh, BMO, uh, tier one expansion, uh, which is halfway done. And then of course the event center and the entertainment district, which I don't think uh, it's hard to explain because people don't really understand that um, in that area with the stampede, the overall plan is to turn it into kind of a um, Nashville entertainment and cultural district. Um, it's just like the event center where it drives me nuts when people call it a, a hockey arena. It's not a hockey arena. A hockey arena has 44 games 
and two or three events. An event center has 44 games and 250 plus events. They're designed completely different. And, and this is what we're talking about is this is an event center, not a hockey arena. There's a hockey arena inside, that's it. So that's exciting. Um, the downtown strategy, um, people go, well, why should I care? Especially in my area, because we're in Northwest Calgary, people go, well, why do I care about the downtown? And why are you putting money into the downtown? Why is it so important? Well, because the downtown has lost $18 billion in assessment value. So that automatically pushed taxes out to all the suburbs and everybody else. So when people don't realize that your taxes could, your, you know, like your house tax could go up, let's say 200 or $300 in a year. And you say, well, you raise taxes. Well, factually, actually the budget was identical. We didn't add a single dollar to the budget, but the assessment redistributes and pushes the money out. And, and it's a broken system. So people get frustrated when we said we raised taxes, but when we actually didn't, but did their taxes go up? Of course they did, but it was a broken assessment system that kind of screws things up. So there's a lot of, there's still a lot of issues that have to be resolved that uh, I was intending to get involved in um, on the third term. Uh, but I also, and, and you brought this up and it's so critical and I don't think people really understand is even if you're well-versed and you're a good business person, et cetera, it will take you a minimum of one year to start to be effective in your job because it's so complicated. So when you're looking at nine or 10 people <laughs> that it's going to take a year to get up to speed, especially when I, I don't think people understand also is there's the vote is eight. So eight passes everything or eight fails everything. So when you're considering nine to 10 are brand new, the, the role of the new mayor coming up is critical that we have the right type of mayor. And, and that's why I actually decided, I, ch I changed my mind and I said, you know what, um, we need the right leader. And uh, the, the people that were running, I didn't think was the right leader. And that's why I thought I'm gonna uh, not run and, and support uh, uh, Jeff Davison because I think he's the, the right type of person. He's, uh, he gets things done. Um, what I can say is uh, a lot of people don't know that it's also normal out of the 14 councillors, it's normal that six do 90% of all the work. So if I asked you today, uh, who are those six? Would you know? I could probably name four out of the six that you're probably thinking of. But, and, and that's the challenge is citizens wouldn't know, wouldn't know who's doing all the work because uh, you know, a lot of my colleagues spend more time campaigning, standing up and making sure they get in the paper rather than doing all the work in the committees, et cetera, where all the work gets done. So you might not get as record, your name might not be recognized like other individuals, but you're actually doing most of the work. So um, it's really important that we have the right type of people uh, joining council um, and, and uh, the one strangest thing I think is just from knocking on thousands and thousands of doors, I've never had one single person ask me what my background was. Not once. Really? really? And it, which for this particular job, it's not like the province or the federal government. Um, you should have some, some uh, financial and business background because the, you know, city council is not a party. They're all individuals. And you're truly your job is to run the most efficient, effective uh, um, city and all the services to all the customers and the citizens. And uh, if, if you don't have any type of business background, how would you even know what questions to ask the administration? I agree. I want to go back for a second because you just said something that has hit so hard on me because I, I've tried to ask every single candidate I've chatted with in Ward 1 and across the city, but as a councillor, you are there to represent the people of this, uh, your ward, but also you have to take into the consideration the larger picture, the city of Calgary as a whole, because our system is not ward versus ward. It's not uh, re uh, community association against community association. It's trying to move the city forward as a whole. 
Um, when I talk to ca uh, candidates, they say, our ward's broken, our ward needs more inf uh, infrastructure spending. What do you say? What do you say to candidates who say, you're only looking at the small picture, you have to look at the big picture, and sometimes wards might get missed, sometimes infrastructure spending might not go to the project that you exactly want, but at the end of the day, the city is growing. Yeah, that's, you know, that's a great observation. Uh, I've always said this, I've been quoted on it. Um, I've kind of come up with this saying is uh, a, a counselor wears three hats. So yes, one, they represent their ward. The second hat, they represent the communities within the ward. And that's really important because the communities within the wards themselves, their needs can be opposite. So I'll give you an example. Uh, in ward one, uh, varsity, has some of the highest percentage of seniors in Calgary for a community. Tuscany, that's in the same ward, has all the schools and high, number five in population, density, and young families. Their needs are opposite within the same ward itself. So you have your community, you have your ward to represent, and then, like you said, is you have the city to represent. And your obligation as a counselor is the city supersedes the other two always, and it should be, because that's really what you're representing overall. Now, you got your job to do within your ward and your plans and, and, and you're right about the infrastructure, et cetera. And I think that's, that, that's really differentiates the skills of your counselor, because whether or not they do their job and advocate and get the right type of infrastructure and the, the things that they need in their, their ward makes a difference. And uh, I've seen door knocking recently in the mayor campaign where I've been in, normally you stay out of your ward, by the way, to be on, for example, you don't go to other people's wards when you're a counselor because they kind of get territorial about it. Um, but when you're a mayor candidate or whatever, you're going around, you're in everybody's ward. And I've been in some wards and I, and I won't name them, but when I've seen it, it's like, oh my God, it's like nothing has happened here for 15 years. There's busted sidewalks, the parks are crappy, all this type of stuff's happening. And I'm going, well, to be honest, I blame that 100% on the counselor. They didn't do their job. And how the heck did they get reelected? But they did. So it, it's, uh, it's kind of a strange thing. And you're right, it's, uh, it, you're there to advocate, but you're also there to, you, you can prioritize things, but you can also, you're there to get your, uh, colleagues, eight of them at least, well, seven others, to get an eight vote and convince them, you know, this should be the priority for the city and this is why. And that's really your job. We are at a crossroads in the city and collaboration seems to be a weird word when you talk to incumbent councillors who are running for certain positions that are not councillor but mayor particularly two of them, I'm not saying who, but I'm just saying two of them that I've had the pleasure of chatting to. We are at a moment in time when working together for the best of our city because of the oil and gas downturn, because of COVID-19, the next four years are going to be the most critical in this city's history. And I'm going to say that without a word of a lie. And I think anyone would agree with, everyone will agree with me on that. How does the city come through this together? Because we are now at a crossroads where we are more divided politically and we are more engaged in petty politics than actually getting the work done. How do we do it? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I appreciate, you know, one of the reasons I'm on the call today with you is uh, you're independent and you're asking the questions of everything, which is very fair. And I think one of the biggest challenges that I've had, especially I've seen a significant um, shift in the media of how they report things at City Hall. And uh, um, they'll probably attack me for this, but only bad news sells. Anything that's good doesn't show up in the paper. And, and, and it's sad that that's the way that's it, it's happening now. Because I can tell you, because I've been on after eight years, I've been on two different councils now. And I would say that this council has achieved and passed more uh, programs and productive stuff than in the last council, like tripled it. But you wouldn't know that in the paper because yeah. they're gonna focus on that spat. They're not gonna focus on the fact that anything got passed. 
Well, I'll give you a prime example is the rhetoric is always, oh, you know, it's easy to say the city's an ATM. It's just an ATM. They're taking your money. Well, factually, we have cut $600 million over the last five years. Factually, it didn't even show up in the paper. We brought in last year EY financial experts to review our budget, to look at how it's done and look for additional savings. I can tell you 99% of citizens don't know that. And, and outside, and would you know that we're actually rated by uh, uh, S&P that we're, rate, we're rated at AA plus for our finances and how it's handled? Yeah. Wouldn't know that either. But <laughs> we're just pigs at the trough and we're an ATM because it's a great spin to get people mad. Um, same thing with employees. Oh, we got way too many employees. So we have the exact same amount of employees right now that we had in 2013, and we've added three Leth bridges of population. Those are facts, it's not spinning. And, and, and it's interesting when you're saying about the other candidates, we have, you know, we have one candidate and I'll, I'll be blunt, I'm not running again. So, I mean, we have a, you know, Councillor Farkas, uh, his job from day one is to disrupt nothing else. He, all he does is disrupt. Um, he's voted like 130 times no. All he votes is no to everything. I'm not sure how that's productive for council because you're not a party. And I don't know. I mean, I guess 13 of us with all our different experiences, we're all stupid and he's the smart one. All 13 of us are dumb and we don't understand what's going on because that no is just great every single time. But it's interesting is his, his uh, platform, his 10 platforms is everything he voted no against at council. But now these are the 10 platforms. I'm going, are you kidding me? Like, and then people are believing it. It's, it's a crazy world now, but that's what's happening. But it, 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 I love this conversation so much, Ward. Thank you so much for jumping into this because a lie takes 10 seconds to go around the world and people will believe it. The truth takes a year to even get off the ground because people don't want to hear it after they've heard the lie. We are now in a moment in our society where the lie seems to be the winner. No matter what happens, if you tell a lie, it's going to be the way it is and it's going to stay that way until the day the earth collapses or we're no longer on this earth. How do we fight that? How do, how do, how do residents get their information because we do have a media that is showing the bad because like you said paper sell newsprint the radio gets tuned into if there's something negative and they want to hear it how do we change that attitude how do we change that atmosphere in today's society because that's what i think people are looking for there are still i i hope there's still a part of the society that still says you know what i want the truth i want the unvarnished truth and I want to hear it from the people who are in power. How do we do that? I believe me, I have lost sleep many nights thinking about this because I, I think this, this is the start of the downfall of our society that we're allowing this. Uh, I, you know, I'll give you an example. In 2013, uh, when I was a counselor, if you said something that was inaccurate, you got annihilated by the press. Like they put you in your place. Now you lie and boom, it's in the paper. And, and I've asked some of those people, um, you printed that and you know it's a lie. And they actually said, it's not our job to filter. And I went, what? It's free press. And I'm going, well, I think people reading this are thinking that you actually might've filtered this. But no, it isn't. And, and, you know, they're going to probably, you know, the press is going to go after me. I think, you know, I can be as sarcastic as possible, but man, you should put on, you know, the front of the Herald and the Sun is, by the way, these are opinions and we have not fact-checked anything and, and, and go at it. But it's, it's, I don't have an answer. I have no answer at all for it. It's, it's been very frustrating for me when I go on social media and correct for example, in a, in a, on, on like Farkas to say, this is absolutely not even remotely the truth. 
while the right wingers just hammer the crap out of you. You're a lazy ass. You should, you should retire and you just get annihilated. And no one listens to the truth anyways, because you're right. The truth wins. It's like, there it is. And the truth wins. I don't have an answer. I, I hope you do. Um, I hope someone does. But I'm right trying, now, man. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to find that answer with these conversations and these uh, interviews, but it's hard because I get attacked for even saying like "boo" about one candidate, and I just don't understand yep. the society that we live in today, where welcome, this is our biggest issue that we have to fry: is someone stating an opinion and it's completely taken out of context, or someone gets attacked for it. And, and don't get me wrong, and I'm not going to pick on the far right. I'll say it's it's the far right and it's the far left. It's both spectrums. They're both equally as bad. Yep. What we need to get to is the center. And Hi, I'm going to be so happy when these Zoom meetings are done. <laughs> It just, I got, oh my God, I went after the press and we're cut out. Is this one of those Facebook things? Boom. <laughs> I got paranoid. I go, they're following me everywhere. <laughs> I can't leave. I'm not even done my term and they're still hounding me. Wow. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I, uh, I will, I, I'm not sure if you remember where you were. But I was drafted about, and raving. I forgot what I even said. But oh, you were yeah, talking, about, talking about, about the far right and the far left in the center, yeah. how people are more in the center and the rise of social media, and uh, you, you have probably seen this the best because in 2013, social media was there, but it wasn't as prominent as it is today. Today, it seems like anyone who has an opinion is on social media. As the next, as the counselor for Ward 1, and to the people who are coming in as counselors, what would you say about social media? While it's a great tool to engage with voters, it can be a cesspool of negativity. How do you tell the person who is going to replace you to balance that need for social media against the need of actually reading all the comments, because I know I can find myself going down the rabbit hole of social media. Yeah. You know, th this is probably, I think, the number one challenge for every single counselor in Calgary, how to communicate with residents, because um, there's so different, there's so many different platforms that people are on. And, uh, and it also, those platforms, as you know, certain demographics are on the platforms. And then, for example, seniors, they want print. They want like a, a brochure, they want print. Different people want, okay, I'm, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, uh, 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 chit chat, whatever. And, and then this, and Facebook, and even this Facebook gets into subgroups of a certain community or subgroup of a safety community, safety group for the community and all this kind of stuff. And, and I don't think people realize that um, a ward, the city of Calgary, so I'll give you an example. Back in, uh, I think it was 1976, there were 475,000 Calgarians and 14 councillors. Now there's 1.3 million Calgarians and 14 councillors. Our our ward is the size of Lethbridge. So it's a city. There's us, one person. When you think in Lethbridge, I think there's a mayor and seven councillors. There's just us. So I have three staff, for example. Uh, my one staff, my executive assistant, does all my scheduling, filtering, all that kind of stuff. That's a full-time job. Then I have a chief of staff, and he, he deals with a lot of residents' complaints, uh, go out to the different locations in the community. And then I have a full-time communications uh, and analyst person that deals, does all my social media and tries to track everything and tries to find out when people want an answer. And that becomes the problem. I'll give, you know, a normal day for me is I leave at 7.30 in the morning and I get home at 9, 9.30 at night. That is a normal day. That's every day. And then during the weekends, you have functions with communities, all different things going on. Then you have city functions that you go to on top of that. So during the day, we're like doing our committees, doing all the, you know, the groundwork and everything. Then we have regular meetings with people. And then during the nighttime, 
we're having meetings with our community associations and open houses, things that are going on. So for me, it's uh, you know 65 to 70 hour a week. And that's the way it's been for, for eight years. The challenge is that some will send a message. So then they'll go within the platform and send a private message because they're mad about something. And then they get twice as mad because I haven't answered within an hour or I haven't answered days. We can't even track this. There's so many ways to get to us. We can't track it. And then people want an answer like right now, et cetera. And we just don't have the capacity to do so. We, we need so many people to do it. Plus we don't have the financial in our budgets because we've cut our budgets back so much. I used to do a, a monthly newsletter. It's electronic now because I can't print it. And then a lot of the seniors and everything are mad because they go, you're not communicating because we want this. And I say, you go to online. Well, we, we don't go online. And, and we don't have the resources and the dollars to effectively talk and communicate with people. So it's a big challenge for everybody. And it, it's a big expense to do it right. Uh, as someone who has who worked in municipal government in the communications department, I, I know, and I will say this verbatim, every single person who asks me, no matter how much you try to communicate to everyone, there will still be that one person who says, well, I didn't get it. Well, we put it in the newspaper, we put it in the TV, we put it on the radio, we sent it to your email, we sent it to Facebook, social media. I w Like, would you like us to come door knock? But if we door knock, you're still not even going to be the there that day when we door knock in your area. So it's a losing <laughs> strategy. <laughs> it's funny you said that because people go, well, you didn't knock on my door to tell me. And I just go. <laughs> um, we are almost at the uh, 30 minute mark. And I do want to get these last few questions in before we do a wrap up here, Ward. Um, eight years. Eight years in one of the best cities of this uh, country in the uh, chair of power of uh, responsibility of uh, delegating money to services in the city. Did you enjoy it? You know what? It's, it's like every single job in the world. There's always some really parts of your job you dislike and there's other parts that, that aren't great uh, that are, that you love. I, I, I tell you, one of the greatest things I think, when people say, well, give me the best moment or what happened, I, I can't give that because I've had a ton of them. What I can say is I have met so many incredible people across Calgary and Calgarians uh, that I would have never had the opportunity to do so in my life and the different groups and everything. And it's been a, it's been a life uh, learning experience for me. I love the city. Uh, I want to get back to we need to be proud of our city. We need to get rid of this dark cloud above us because it's not true. There's a lot of great things happening. There are a lot of fantastic Calgarians that do incredible things for their neighbors. Um, we are different. I, I've traveled all across Canada and the States and all this kind of stuff. We are different in Calgary. We're unique. And if we don't get back to it, we're going to lose it completely. And, and that's what I'm afraid of. But I, 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 I love our city. It's been an honor to serve and it is serving. People might think that is. We're working day and night, it's serving. It's been an honor. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to a different part of my life, but uh, it's been a fantastic experience in our love. And, in our, in our, you know, the love for the city never goes away. Well, uh, I appreciate that, but you know what the follow up question is going to be. Well, you can say you love the people of how you've met them and so many great experiences. Are you leaving with any regrets? Um, I didn't think, push on uh, an issue far enough, didn't get something done properly. Is there any regrets in a past eight years as Councillor Sutherland? Yeah, I think, you know what, uh, I've learned you can always do more. I think you have to walk away as you've tried the best you can. Uh, would I like to do more? Yes, that's why I was initially going to run. I, I, I think my, my biggest regret or disappointment is just the last couple of years of, of how society is, as, you know, the ugliness of the society and the mental health issues that have come out um, isn't good for anybody. And uh, uh, I, I've tried to address those issues and, and, and in, a, in a positive way, and it's been frustrating, but, um, you know, uh, I'm gonna have hope 
because you got to have hope and not give up. That, that's all I can say. So I'm not giving up. I'm disappointed, but I'm not giving up. I'm glad that someone's willing to say that. Don't give up hope in this city, bees. We are. We have our bright future ahead of us. We are, like I said, this is airing the Saturday before election day. So this is two days away from election day. I've got to ask the question because I've asked it to your fellow counselors who are also retiring. Have you made up your mind on who you're voting for on election day? I, I can imagine who you're voting for for mayor, but have you made your mind up on all the other issues? Senate, school board trustee, plebiscides, fluoride, uh, counselor, have you made up your mind yet? Or are you still like a lot of uh, Calgarians who are still up in the air about this decision that they have to make? Um, I have to do my research on Senator. Um, I, I have no idea. I'm doing my research on that. Obviously, Mayor, I'll be supporting Jeff Davison and uh, I've decided on my counselor. Perfect. Um, my last question to you, and this is going to, uh, I, I want you to think about it. If you don't need to, then don't worry. But Talk to the people of Calgary who are listening to this right now. Why is it important for people to vote on election day? Because it makes a difference. I, I, you know, forget about the federal election. I know everybody's frustrated that, oh, nothing changed. But um, boy, you want change? Change happened. It's all random. It, change has happened. There will be 10 new counselors. So, you know, it's one of those things. Be careful what you ask for because it might not be a good thing because I think that last provincial election, well, you can talk about this one too, maybe we picked the wrong party, but uh, um, it, it's, it makes a huge difference. So all I can say is if you don't vote, then don't complain because you don't have a right to. And don't go on social media saying your voice wasn't heard. And, and mm. he, here's my last thing. And I, I, I want to say this. Say that was the last. I, I know, but I want to say, I, I, I want to say this. For the campaigns, particular one in particular, who are saying, if you vote for a certain candidate, you're voting for another candidate. No, no, no. Vote for the person that best represents your morals and values and vote for the person you want to vote for. Do not get into scared voting. You have the right to vote for whoever you want at the end of the day. There's my- Yeah, I, I, I think my comment on that is, uh, I've seen all the different folks polling don't believe it it's it's don't the worst thing you can do is i'm going to vote for this person in order to get this that's when things get screwed up in, in democracy vote for whoever your candidate is end of story yeah i agree um ward i want to thank you so much for doing this this has been an honor and a pleasure i i appreciate you taking half out of your half hour out of your day today and doing this um best of luck in your uh departure from municipal politics. And uh, I look forward to seeing you out uh, at some events later on and at that event center downtown uh, Calgary once it's officially open. I'm looking forward to it. And, and thanks for what you're doing. I think it's a fantastic idea. And I uh, hope uh, you get lots of people watching.